Hello, in this video we are going to discuss about construction of a heap uh, in bottom of manner. So here is a here is an array of keys uh, which needs to be uh, converted into a heap. Uh, if you look at the array representation or the, the binary tree rep uh, representation of the array, uh, it looks like this. This is just a binary tree at the moment and it is not a heap. How do we convert it to convert it into a heap? Uh, so we could start from the bottom of the tree and check whether uh, the subtree starting from each of those nodes is uh, is a heap or not. If not, make it as a heap. Uh, so we could start from the rock bottom, but it's not necessary because all these leaves are uh, heaps by themselves. So the first one we need to process is this particular node. And this happens to be the last non-leaf node in the tree, which is always at the location uh, floor of n by 2. So let's see whether this, this subtree starting from this node is uh, is a heap. It is not because nine the edge child is uh, greater than uh, uh, the node. That's why I pull it up. Now when you pull it up, nine comes to this place and five is, is here. Uh, so the, the subtree starting from this node is a heap now. And the next one we need to process is here, six. So this one is at least is already uh, at least as large as its children. So uh, the subtree starting from this node is already a heap. So the next one we need to process is uh, the subtree starting from seven. It's not a it's not a heap because uh, find uh, the larger child is 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 greater than uh, this node. So pull that larger child up, and seven goes uh, goes to this place. And uh, now this is a heap starting from here. Now uh, the subtree starting from here is also a heap, a heap because it is at least as large as this, uh, as its children. Now uh, from here, now look at this. These two subtrees are already heaps. And now this one, the two, uh, this node is the only one which could violate the uh, the heap property. Now how do we check is uh, find the larger of these two child and see whether uh, that is. Uh, that is larger than uh, the root itself. If that is the case, pull it up. So 10 is pulled up here, 2 goes here. And then its children, 8 is larger um, among them. 8 is greater than 2. So pull that 8 up and 2 goes down here. Now this is how the whole heap is created now. Now let's look at the uh, algorithm of uh, how, how exactly does it do this. I will just explain with an example, but let's look at the real algorithm. So here is the given array of 1 to n elements which needs to be converted uh, as a heap. So as, I, as we already saw, we can start from the last non-leaf node which is at floor of n by 2 and then go up to uh, the root which is at 1. So at, at every stage in this iteration, uh, we, what we need to do is uh, the subtree starting from i should become heap at the end of this for loop. Uh, so we uh, for that the element at i at, the, at, at i could trickle down as much as possible. So this is the k is the index which will track uh, that trickling down element, and v is the element which needs to be trickled down. And uh, we start with uh, heap. We start with saying that heap heap is not a tree, and then we do it as long as heap property is not satisfied, and uh, k is. Uh, Kth element we are processing, so this condition makes sure make sure that k is already a leaf or not. If it is already a leaf, we don't have to uh, go further. So what does how does it make sure is uh, when 2k is the uh, is, is first child, which is left child is at 2k. If 2k is within the array boundary, then there is a left child. Otherwise, there is no left child. If there is not left child, it means k is already a leaf node. So now when we come here and say uh, 2k is the left child and that's uh, j, j is pointing to left child now and if there is a right child exists uh, then uh, check whether right child is greater than the left child if that is the case increment j. So when we reach here j is pointing to uh, the larger of the children. So now see whether the element we are trickling down is, is greater than or equal to the larger child. If that is the case, heap is already heap property is already satisfied. We can stop there. Otherwise, uh, pull that uh, larger child into kth place, right? And your uh, now the j, j will become your new k, right? And then do it uh, as long as your heap property is satisfied, or you you touch uh, the end of 
or the k is already a, a leaf node so at the end of it uh, may, uh, copy that element which was trickling down to the uh, 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 to the index k right so at the end of this 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 for loop uh, the subtree starting from i is uh, is already converted into a heap so we we do it till uh, one in the reverse order and when we process at one because that is the root uh, so the whole tree becomes uh, a heap now if i have to analyze this uh, this algorithm if i just make a superficial analysis this is how i'm going to do i see there is an outer loop which runs for about uh, n by 2 times which is in the order of n and uh, there is a while loop here which runs at the max for uh, uh, 2k which is less than or equal to n and every time uh, this could j could double so it, it runs roughly about log n times in the worst case so the whole thing will run for about uh, an order of uh, n log n times which i can safely say the time complexity of this algorithm uh, belongs to a uh, big o of n log n but is this a tighter upper bound big o is all about upper bound right so is this a tighter upper bound what does that mean is can i say that the time complexity of this algorithm is theta of n log n that is too early to make a call so we need to make a little more detailed analysis of it so the detailed analysis is, uh, is we cannot do it just by looking at the for loops here we should really understand how are we processing it from the tree's perspective and analyze level by level so we are going to uh, we are trying that here Uh, so this is how a tree uh, our, our our tree looks like which we just processed suppose the height of the tree is uh, h and uh, in this case suppose uh, h is equal to 5 in this example uh, so the element we process at this uh, level 0 which happens to be the last one we process in this algorithm when i is equal to 1 so that could trickle down uh, the largest possible path right because at, this is at the top and then anything could trickle down till the till the leaf level which is the last level right which is level uh, h in this case right so in this case it it, it can go down for five levels and uh, at each level we make roughly two comparisons two key comparisons one is uh, we check whether uh, we check whether uh, there is uh, basically we, we make sure whether which one is the largest child and another condition is we check with the element the parent to see whether heap property is satisfied or not if we take these two uh, comparisons as uh, as my basic operation and, uh, and so we are doing basically uh, two comparisons at every level so this element element here could trickle down for five levels and in each level we are making two comparisons so essentially we made 10 comparisons here ten basic operations uh, in a way and at this level uh, uh, this node could uh, the key at this place could trickle down for four levels down and uh, that is basically 5 minus 1 in this case which is level number i is this one is level number and uh, two comparisons at every level for this node and we have two nodes at this at this level that's why the number of comparisons is twice that of two times of 5 uh, minus 1 four in this case and at this level there are two power two uh, nodes here and each of them can take uh, two times of three which is six comparisons right and there are two power three uh, nodes here and each of them take uh, about uh, uh, each of them take twice of uh, two levels down because it can trickle down two more levels and at this level there are two power four key elements and there is only one swap it can happen here so that takes two basic operations so at this level we don't make anything because we don't process the leaves at all we started with the first or the the last non leaf node which is here right so if i i'm i'm making a simple assumption here uh, which is uh, the, the tree is fully complete here instead of just essentially complete but yeah that is uh, that is a fair assumption to make for this analysis so the number of uh, the time complexity of the uh, of, of this algorithm boils down to i am processing for each level uh, the level 0 to level h minus 1 level 0 is this and level h minus 1 is this we don't have to process for level h right and in each level there are uh, these many uh, nodes in that so in in, a, in level i we have 2 power i uh, keys in that or 2 power i nodes in that so that is why this j is equal to 1 uh, up to 2 power i and in each node the the 
the number of basic operations we do is twice the number of h minus i h is my level uh, height of the tree minus this is the level i am processing right so this will actually give me uh, the time complexity as a whole so if i have to analyze that little deeper uh, then to see whether which class it belongs to uh, the same expression i just wrote uh, this happens to be this this you can write it as j is equal to 1 to 2 power i which is the same and if i simplify this uh, I'm, I'm making a simple assumption here where n is a 2 power k minus 1 which means the tree is uh, fully complete instead of just essentially complete right so now if i simplify that this one uh, this is just like a constant for this particular summation so which is which runs for 2 power i times uh, i'm just multiplying 2 power i for this term and here if i simplify that i can actually take it out to i'm taking out completely and then for the h into 2 power i h can be taken out and 2 power i is here and this is i into 2 power i and uh, this is a simple gp which uh, simple simplifies to 2 power h minus 1 because it runs up to h, h minus 1 here and uh, this one is is actually obtained by this uh, uh, this summation uh, which you can observe, which you can uh, look at in some other uh, references. So I'm just substituting here. If I simplify that, uh, it will turn out to be less than 2 n uh, basic operations. So which obviously belongs to uh, theta of n. That's why our, our bottom up approach uh, of constructing a heap, he, uh, uh, the time complexity of that belongs to theta of n. Otherwise, uh, there is another approach which is, for, which is top down which takes uh, theta of n log n time. So that's why uh, whenever you are constructing a heap, uh, you should always prefer using the bottom-up approach. Right. Uh, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.